Hello, you're welcome. You're welcome to my channel today and it gives me great joy to notice you being this content. I am Dr. Lion Kak Kwali. I am a lecturer in the university. I am a researcher. I'm a life coach. I'm a public speaker. On this channel, I do a number of stuffs. And all the stuffs I do, you can easily cluster them into four. Sociology, research, relationship, and migration. All these I do and I release content on them as frequently as possible to add value to my subscribers and my viewers. Usually, I'm particularly very interested in building capacities of people and I believe this should be freely available and that's why I share this content as frequently as possible. Meanwhile, if today is your first time of coming in contact with my channel or with my videos, kindly subscribe to this channel, it means a lot. Tap your notification button so anytime I drop new content, you are alerted. Kindly comment, like and share this content as widely as possible. Please also inform others about this channel. Meanwhile, if you subscribed to this channel previously, thank you very much for staying tuned. In this video, I want to address a very important issue within the context of sociology. Therefore, the topic of this presentation or the title of this video is What is Demography of All Population Studies and What is the Relevance? Demography of Population Studies is a very popular and a very relevant subdiscipline of sociology. However, in some universities, demography or population study stands on its own as a full-fledged department. But in some universities, this course is subsumed under a more, a more common I mean, discipline. For example, it could be a branch of sociology. It is a it is an increasingly popular discipline or subdiscipline. Meanwhile, some departments, some universities may decide to call this uh, demography only, some population studies only. Uh, so, but these concepts are essentially referring to the same thing. Therefore, demography is commonly described as scientific study of population. So demography or population studies just attempts to understand population in a scientific, in a deliberate, in a systematic way. It studies population of people. In this case, we look at the demography studies, the structure, the patterns, the processes, the dynamics of population how our population change how our populations of countries changing of societies then what is the structure of these populations and you may that's when we're talking about population structure population pyramid population changes and the processes of all of this so we want to understand this so that we are able to plan more effectively and more efficiently to the extent that populations can then be be turned to opportunities rather than threats. So populations can continuously be optimized. You know, there is this debate about population as a liability or population as an asset. For experiences of China recently have come to change the narrative to the extent that people can now begin to see population as opportunity or as asset. Proud to the emergence and development aggressively of China, many theories exist, I mean, many theories have been narrating population as threats or liabilities. Particularly if you look at the Malthusian theory, you know, you will be able to see this and a number of them. Demography also wants to understand the trends, population trends, population patterns, and population transitions, so that we are able to, to, to innovate policies 
efficiently. So, demography studies population scientifically by looking at three major processes in terms of population. We look at death, which is mortality, birth, which is fertility, and migration. So the way we look at these three elements, are the ways we look at them are essentially for us to be able to understand how our populations changing, how our populations of countries subsisting on the account of birth, how frequently or how much are people giving birth? How frequently or how much are people dying? How frequently or how much are people moving from one society to the other? These are three elements, three major factors that affect population changes or dynamics. So these are three major issues through which demographers or population studies experts monitor and manage population. And particularly of interest is also the fact that demographers or population study experts, population studies experts also look at human behavior generally in society and want to understand how the human behaviors of people affect their population realities. So demographers also look at culture, look at traditions, look at institutions in society, look at the norms and values of the societies so we can significantly understand why we are having the results we are having or population outcomes we are having in terms of birth, death and migration. Because my, I mean, population outcomes are essentially consequences of human behavior. So demographers also want to understand the causes of this population dynamics or outcomes or structures or processes or patterns or trends, how human behaviors affect them and how culture also affect them and how this population outcomes also affect culture is, and behavior of people is symbiotic in terms of relationship. So I hope you're following this conversation, this, this presentation, make sure you watch this till the end. And, and also, you also want to understand the, the socioeconomic development implications of population changes or population structure. Because ultimately, is demographers want to understand population and their implications for, sus for sustainable development and well-being of society. So demography is not just about, it's not just an, it's not just a pure discipline, it's also an applied discipline. In the, in, the, in, in the sense that ultimately is for us to be able to understand human societies and growth and development situation realities and, and projections of those countries so that they can live well. So demographers want to understand the context that is the settings of this population and how, how these settings, for example, the family system can affect and explain population. You know, and there is increasing interest in demography nowadays because we now talk about demographic dividends, demographic transition. We now talk about declining population. We talk about aging population. We talk about labor migrations. Also, we talk about the youth bulge, how some countries are having most of their population as youth, and these have implications. For, for development and the well-being of, of the society. We will look at demographic processes and, and political outcomes and political processes. So we, we want to understand all these demographic transitions and the rest of it. Because populations will also affect the human capital realities of countries. Even the, the opportunities in, in those societies, labor markets, outcomes and realities. So we want to understand this, all of this in terms of even migration and labor movements across, across time. And there is increasing interest in demography now and population studies. That's why you see countries like China, you know, and the countries like uh, United States of America, even Canada, even Australia, even United Kingdom, are opening up their borders, I mean, to, I mean, to migrants because of population realities of this country. There's a need for more people to work and some of those 
countries are having aging population and their labor interests are shifting to the extent that they are, they are a deficit in terms of labor and opportunity and opportunities are enormous in those places but they have fewer numbers of people willing to work or available to work then there's, there's now this grand design to attract experts from some other parts of the world for different reasons to those countries these are population issues demographers are demographers are very much needed to be able to analyze this kind of population realities trends and patterns and the implication for labor for labor processes and even the market scenarios so we, we also look at population and health of people we look at urbanization and population problems once talk about urbanization you know talk, that means it's about people and people also need must be understood and be able to put in, to be analyzed in able that we are able to cater for them you look at a lot of other issues so that we can draw conclusions that are very about the total population at the same time individual within that population but a very important point i want to mention i want to make before i leave is that demography and population studies tends to be very quantitative tend to be very statistical tends to be very you know mathematical so if you want to specialize in demography it may you may have to consider your quantitative capability and interest because you may have to do a lot of calculations or modeling you know that when you talk about trends patterns definitely we need a lot of modeling projections statistical analysis so you may have have been involved in a number of uh, of, of demographic uh, works uh, in demography even at consultancy level that there there were reasons to model and to interpret as as some work streams so if if you want to specialize in demography or population studies you may have to consider your quantitative capability not that you cannot effectively work as a population study expert but if you really want to be outstanding you may have to consider your quantitative capability and interest. You can build the capabilities, but are you very much interested? Because it's about, it's, it's about statistics, it's about modeling, it's about data, and about theory. So competencies are very important in, in this area. So they are, you know, they use uh, demographers talk about cans, you know, you talk about, I mean, ratios, and you talk about a number, uh, and projections into the future so there are some you know some crude bad trade crude debt rate growth rates and some other more advanced quantitative um you know uh, modeling and and the rest of them also there's so demographers work a lot with data a lot with data for so that they can project and you know they're the ones also responsible for management of sensors in, in many many countries then you must also understand that Demography and population studies can be largely transdisciplinary in the sense that what affects human population are quite many and they can be understood from different disciplinary perspectives. So you may have demographers also uh, coming from different disciplinary backgrounds originally, you know, and even when they are already demographers, they still work across discipline in disciplines in social sciences, even in the in the biological sciences. You may have to they may have to work with economists, anthropologists, statisticians biologists, geographers, and the rest of them, so that they can have a total view, total view of uh, every uh, everything that affects the population. Don't forget, just like development studies, can be, it can be transdisciplinary or multidisciplinary, so that human beings can easily be understood in understanding the causes, patterns, processes, structures, and consequences of human behavior. So this, these are a, a number of other issues, but you have to know generally that now we know that the essence of demography is to understand the economic growth, social growth, and other associated issues that have to do with population, that affect population, and that population affects. So uh, that's just my brief about this wonderful course. It's very relevant now that I've, like I've shown to you. In fact, it is on record that one of those factors that jump-started and sustained the development trajectories of China actually is the population the population of china but china simply converted the negative narrative about its population growth 
and massive population to economic opportunities and industrial opportunities that most companies relocated to China because for production productive uh, purposes because the labor there labor processes and numbers of people willing to work there are so many and this affect, this affected at the original level how much labor labor the, the workers uh, were made to charge or charged compared to other advanced countries so the con china converted this population to to resources rather than liability compared against the original theories of Mart Robo Malthus and some other theories. And, uh, and even today, other countries now are beginning to see that population can also be very important in sustaining and driving their growth to the extent that when they lack sufficient population at home, they simply open their borders to migrants from over the world, all over the world to come. Some were even given permanent residence from their country or countries of origin. Isn't population very strategic to drive economic growth? Then you see that demography is very important to explain and assist us in our, towards this direction. Thank you very much for viewing. Kindly subscribe to this channel, comment, like, and share. Until I see you in my next video, be your best.